Made by Hand is a new book about how DIY is making our world a better place. Up next on the Penguin Business Beat, I had the opportunity to sit down with Mark Frauenfelder, co-founder of Boing Boing and editor of Make Magazine, to talk about his new book. Could you tell me a little bit about how you became interested in do-it-yourself projects? Sure, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm the editor of a technology project magazine called Make Magazine, and I wasn't really a do-it-yourselfer, but I got really interested in the, the things that these people, these these what I call make, alpha makers or DIYers made, you know, things like kites with cameras in them or their own homebrew biodiesel or really cool tree houses with zip lines and cigar box guitars and this this endlessly varied array of really cool projects. And I had always been interested in doing it, but I realized that I was missing something that all of these makers had, and that was they have the courage to screw up. Being able to accept mistakes is, is not an easy thing to do. But contemporary brain research shows that when you make mistakes, that's like one of the most effective ways to learn. It really imprints your brain when you make mistakes so that you can do things the right way the next time. So I made a conscious effort to accept my mistakes and realize that I would go into this and, and realize that I was going to you know, spend a lot of money and break tools and waste materials. But it was worth it. You know, there, there are so many benefits from making uh, that uh, it, it's well worth it. Do you think there's more to this maker mindset than just the accepting mistakes? Oh, yeah, that definitely is. I mean, one of them is that you gain a deeper connection and a sense of engagement with the kinds of things that in your life that keep you alive and happy. This this world around us is a man-made world that's very technologically complex and kind of hidden from us by an obscure layer of bureaucracy. So we don't know where the food comes from that we eat. We don't know how the, you know, all these tubes and pipes that come in to keep us uh, fed and warm and happy, uh, educated, entertained, how any of that works. And so if you just start to do simple things, you know, having chickens and, and having your own eggs or keeping bees and getting your own honey and wax, just that small sense of control over your life, that's one benefit. I think another benefit is that it makes you appreciate the things that you have that are provided, you know, by skilled laborers and craftspeople and even corporations. I and, mean, you know, discovering how challenging and time-consuming it can be to make something on your own with human power, like for example, I, I've been whittling my own spoons out of wood. And it's a fun thing to do, but, you know, it just takes a lot of time to to whittle a spoon. Hour, it takes me hours and hours to do it. And if I were to have to supply my family's kitchen implements by carving them by hand, it would take forever to do. So, you know, it, it gives you an appreciation for the things you already have. So it sounds like... You come at this, if, there, if you were to ask the question, are, are makers you know, born and not made? It seems like you're coming at it from the latter category. You think you can become a maker. I feel like a lot of people come to this saying, oh, I'm just not that handy. I can never make things on my own. So do you think people can actually change? I think they can. And one of the examples that I have in the book is, is a fellow who goes by the name Mr. Jalopy. And he's kind of like a maker hero to people. He makes these functional art projects, like this adult tricycle with a movie projector mounted on it in a wooden box and so he can ride that around the neighborhood and show drive-in movies on people's walls it's just a beautiful piece of work and then he made a, a really cool thing he calls the world's largest ipod which is an old 1940s wooden hi-fi cabinet and you can put a record on it and it will automatically turn it into an mp3 file and store it on the macintosh that's that he's built inside the cabinet so he makes these really cool things and you would think that he was born with, you know, not necessarily a green thumb, but maybe a, a mechanical thumb. But the, the fact is that he really wasn't handy. He was a record industry executive and was very inexperienced with all that kind of stuff. But he made a conscious decision about 15 years ago to become handy and started picking up tools at garage sales and just experimenting and reading books. He made a lot of mistakes and he still makes a lot of mistakes, but he's got this cool body of work to show people you know just getting involved with all these kinds of things was a, a really fun way to get involved with you know, the way that I, that I eat my food and entertain myself and get my kids involved we did a lot of fun gardening experiments and not just buying purchasing everything but taking a more active role in becoming a producer instead of just a consumer has been a really interesting and rewarding experience you're listening to the penguin business beat 
For more information about the show, visit www.portfolioimprint.com. And now back to Mark Fraunfelder, author of Made by Hand. I want to go back to the espresso because I, I remember in the book when you, when you went and I think it was Kyle Glanville that you met with. Yeah. Um, you said he actually didn't recommend that you make espresso at home. He seemed to think it was on the, on the same level as, as do-it-yourself brain surgery. So yeah. I'm wondering, <laughs> I love that. So I was wondering that you came to realize there are certain things that don't work better as DIY projects. You know, here's the thing. I, in, unless I, you know, turned my life over to espresso, I'm never going to be able to make coffee like Kyle does. For one thing, I don't have the equipment he has. I also don't have the amount of time that he devotes to, to coffee, you know, traveling to African, Indonesia, and South America and studying the different kinds of coffee. But I can challenge myself and make coffee that I'm happy with um, and that I feel personally good about. Most of the stuff you talk about in the book works out pretty well. I'm wondering if there was anything that truly failed, some horrible failure that you left out of the book entirely. Oh, let's see. Um, well, there was one thing that I started doing that, that I abandoned and I didn't write about, um, uh, and that was human-generated electricity. Uh, there's a, a, a group of people, uh, and they share their stories online and their plans and everything, that make, they kind of look like exercise bicycles, except they have a big flywheel on the front. And they pedal them, and they either pump energy into the grid, or they store it in batteries. And then they use the electricity they generate to watch TV and brown their, their toast and do all those kinds of things. But I looked at the math, and I realized that just to supply like 1% of my family's energy needs, I'd be having to ride the bike a couple of hours a day. Didn't make sense to do that. So I guess I'm going to change gears a little bit and, and ask you to get a little philosophical for me. But um, I was wondering what you think is driving the whole new DIY movement that's emerged in the most recent years. It's interesting. I think that the thing that it's, it's the Internet. The, the Internet's kind of the thing that killed the DIY movement, and it's the thing that's bringing it back. And I'll explain what I mean. In the early 90s, the internet as it was just becoming something that was available to most people. All these people who were kind of creative geeks saw the internet and the World Wide Web as this virgin territory that was ripe for development and creating cool tools. And so they abandoned all their, you know, Heathkit radio projects and ham radio and tinkering with things in their garage and kind of abandoned the physical world for a long time and went to work on the web. And, you know, look at all this cool stuff we have now. Fifteen years later, the, the web is this amazing, rich place that's been pretty well developed. I mean, there, there's still things move, it, being developed on it now, but a lot of the big problems are out of the way. So I think these geeks who created the web and all the stuff on it now have kind of lifted up their head and looked around and said, wow, you know, I have this whole physical world around me that's, that's a, the ultimate hackable platform. And I can make all these cool things, you know, rockets, robots, race cars, you know, geeked out gardening techniques. There's that rebirth. And the Internet itself now has become the source for plans and ideas and collaboration with other people. Where I live, I'm not going to find anybody on my block who makes cigar box guitars. The, the odds are really low that I would. But if I go online and do a search, in a couple of seconds, I'm going to find a couple of thousand of eager cigar box makers, enthusiasts who are really happy to share their ideas and plans and encourage me. So the Internet now is this great enabler. I wouldn't be doing my job as a business podcaster if I didn't ask you, you know, how you think the principles of DIY translate into entrepreneurship and business? Do you think any of this can be put to work in a corporate setting? You know, I think it can because no matter how large a project is, how massive it is, it can always be looked at as individuals who have a passion and a problem to solve. And, and I see that a lot of times online with these groups who, you know, somebody writes in and says, I, you know, I'm having a hard time getting this problem solved on my cigar box guitar, like a, making a bridge out of a, a certain piece of hardware. And you'll get a lot of people collaborating and suggesting ideas and eventually a solution will arise. So it's that kind of combination of passionate individuals collaborating to achieve a bigger goal. 
And, and I think that's where you know, the ideas in this book could help. Oh, that's a great way to look at it. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, Courtney. <laughs>